looking for her friends. She thinks they might be in the haunted house. I like to make the haunted house sounds. Meet nine-year-old Joshua Lewis. There's one, she sees a ghost and her friends jump out to surprise her. Today, he's trying out a new piece of tech called Code Jumper, a physical coding language developed by Microsoft for children who are blind or visually impaired. You plug in the pods into the hub and you turn the knob, which is the donut knob, which is, looks like a donut, but it's a circle knob and it's flat and you turn it and, it, and you can choose sounds. In the summer, I did a little tutoring with Joshua and he was talking about coding and that was something that he was very interested in and he wanted to know what I knew about it. So when they contacted the school, I was like, oh my goodness, this is really exciting that we're going to get to um, actually lay hands on it and let the kids be able to use it. When I was over here, we made we made a song and it was row, row, row your boat. Row, row, row your boat. And then we made we we made like a haunted a haunted house book. Good design works for all kids. You know when you've got a product that just works because it's intuitive. Students catch on quick, and in essence, uh, learning then begins to happen, and it just begins to blossom. Each pod creates a new line of code that shows up on a tablet, which then turns into musical notes, songs, words, or sounds. So they're physically picking up pieces of code and creating their strands as they go along. The hub reads through all the pods and sends it through the, its speaker and that's how you can hear all the, the information that you had gotten from the pods. Deanna LaFan, a teacher of the blind and visually impaired at Breckenridge Franklin Elementary in Louisville, Kentucky, is one of the first to get it in her classroom. What I really loved was that how um, at ease they are with it because when they came to myself and the other teacher, Miss um, Allen, that works with me, we were both like, well, we don't know a lot about coding and this, like, the, this, that kind of thing. And then when the kids start using it, they're just like all over it. I mean, they're like, oh, and this does this, and this does this, and you can do this. And it's so much more natural for them because that's the wor world that they live in. If I can get it at home, I would try to do what 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 I can do here with with my family. I would try to make all kinds of creepy noises or anything, but my parents they'll they'll be creeped. <laughs> they'll be thinking that that somebody broke in or something. <laughs> Craig Metter, president of the American Printing House for the Blind in Louisville, is working with Microsoft to get CodeJumper in the hands of students all over the world. There's a huge shortage in Microsoft and uh, we've also heard this from Apple too. So we've heard this from Google as well, from uh, members of their accessibility team. They can't find enough programmers. Programmers are in high demand. This is a huge field. You can be blind and become a programmer. Joshua's a natural at coding, a skill that could definitely come in handy in the future. What do you want to be when you grow up? An inventor. What do you want to invent when you grow up? Well, flying cars. <laughs> Code Jumper officially launches for the classroom and for individual purchase in July. And for students like Deanna's, it can't arrive soon enough. Assistive technology and um, the, the uh, technology that APH um, has really levels that playing field for our kids when you're looking at careers. It shows them the jobs that they can do. Um, it just really links the sighted world with the, the blind world as well.